I'm sorry, Mother. Death by misadventure. <laughs> oh, Mother, I didn't mean it. Oh, Death, where is thy sting? Giles? Giles? Mr. Tyler! Mr. Tyler! Daphne, I was just dreaming about you. <laughs> Go on, I've been. Make it come true. Where is Major Bradshaw? Giles? Giles! This isn't funny, Mr. Tyler. Alas, poor Hannibal! <laughs> Let's face it, he's done a runner again. I can't believe it. That man is slippery with a capital S and quite a few other things with a capital S. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Major Bradshaw returned last night full of contrition and agreed to visit the police station with me this morning. And now this. Well, you should have let me chain him to the radiator like I suggested. <laughs> But he gave me his word. Oh, Daphne, come on, his word. The day he gives his word is the day the Pope shacks up with Joan Collins. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm going to telephone Inspector Boxham. Major Bradshaw's let me down for the last time. And you can take that triumphant smirk off your face. I'm trying to look sympathetic. Well, you're not succeeding. You look like a smug gorilla. <laughs> gorilla. And the sooner you return to your natural habitat, the better I'll like it. You can't stand it, can you? You can't stand it. I was right about Major Brocream, right from the word go. I'm sorry. Forgive me. You're right, Mr. Tyler. For once in your life, you were right. I should never have trusted him. I allowed my heart to rule my head. What a lovely head it is, too. You hang on to it. Thank you, Mr. Tyler. I'd like to hang on to it too. <laughs> that's all right. He was so charming. So plausible. How was I supposed to know that beneath that sophisticated veneer lurked a lying, deceitful, two-faced... Pile of lizard's droppings. <laughs> well, I was going to say rat. Oh, fair enough. Rat's droppings. <laughs> well, the sooner I alert the police, the safer society will be. This isn't easy for me, Mr. Tyler. I know. Informing on a man who'd captured my heart. Go for it, Daphne. You'll be the tastiest supergrass they've ever seen. <laughs> this is my darkest hour, Mr. Tyler. And if I ever lay eyes on that man again. Yes? Well, let's just say I have some finely honed meat skewers. Good morning. Oh, no. Giles! Go away. Oh, something the matter? Giles, where have you been? Well, I've just taken a brisk constitutional around your garden, Daphne. Ah. Oh, and as I paused a while on the dewbid apple grass and breathed the fresh crisp air of an English morn, I gazed in silent and helpless admiration at the wonders of nature on display. Daphne, you have created an absolutely first-class riot of colour in your borders. Oh, thank you, Giles. Well, I found it all extremely inspirational, and the words of the poet positively flooded my thoughts. My love is like a red, red rose that's <laughs> newly sprung in June. My love is like the melody that's sweetly played in tune. Oh, Giles. I think this one's favourite. <laughs> Please, Mr. Tyler. An English rose. For an English rose. Oh. How lovely. What can I say? You can say, die, greaseball. <laughs> Be quiet, Mr. Tyler. Daphne, you promised me. Promised you what? 
Keep Bab and our Bradshaw. Oh, take no notice, Giles. Mr. Tyler's humour is notoriously difficult to appreciate. I don't believe this. You've fallen for his silver tongue again, haven't you? What do you see in him? I mean, he's the one who broke your arm. He's a walking crime wave. I advise you to tread warily, Mr. Tyler. I'm on the verge of clearing my name. And to cap it all, he's still thieving. I beg your pardon. You just nick that rose out of our garden. <laughs> well, that's it. Coming from a man who treats the municipal park as his personal florist. Daphne. Now, enough, Mr. Tyler. Enough. Now, why don't you do something useful for a change, like evicting that raving lunatic from your room? Wilf? He's not a raving lunatic. He's my friend. Well, that alone should make him certifiable. Hey! <laughs> the fact remains that anyone who mutters, alas, poor Hannibal, has to be mentally unstable. Dare one ask who Hannibal is? It's Wilf's mum's budgie. Wilf gave him a peanut when she was away on holiday, at which point Hannibal got a bit choked and became um, his mum's late budgie. What extraordinary circles you move in. But I don't want your crony living here, Mr. Tyler. You represent as much lunacy as I can cope with. Now, please, I want to make Major Bradshaw his breakfast. Oh, that this too solid flesh would be <laughs> Well, if that isn't latent insanity, I don't know what is. I don't want to leave you alone with this outlaw. Outlaw? How do you like your eggs, Giles? Poached, I imagine. <laughs> To be or not to be, that is the peanut. Oh, come on, Wilf. Wakey, wakey. <laughs> you sleep all right? I've had terrible dreams, Sam. No kidding. Nightmares, the like of which I've never encountered. Hannibal is going to haunt me to my grave. Well, be fair, Wilf. You haunted him to his. I didn't kill him deliberately, but in Mum's eyes it was nothing short of murder most foul. I can't begin to describe her emotional upheaval when I told her how that cursed peanut had lodged in Hannibal's throat. To her, he was unique. Well, he certainly was unique. He was the world's first budgie with an Adam's apple. <laughs> this is no time for ribaldry, Sam. And if you're any kind of friend, you'll persuade Mum to forgive and forget and have me back. Yeah, I'll do my best, mate. Although Daphne's gonna miss you something rotten. Struth, is that the time? I'll be late for work. There'll be numerous animals who'll be wondering what's happened to their breakfast. And hell hath no fury like a hungry hippo. Don't panic, Wilf. I'll run you down a zoo. You're a pal. Yeah, I'll warm the car up when I get dressed. Thanks, Sam. It's a selfless gesture which I much appreciate. Well, it's not entirely selfless, Wilf. I mean, there's a part of me can't help wondering how that sick crocodile's getting on. Oh, Daphne, this is nothing short of a culinary triumph. There's something I want to ask you, Giles. 